I'm Adam Keane and I've just finished teaching a retreat at Purple Valley. Um, look at the previous uh, video for the sun salutation and I teach the general way to stretch and now I'm going to teach the general way to do a forward fold. So it, it kind of works with the last video but if you haven't seen the last video then progress anyway and you'll still get the basic idea out of this. A stretch is always contextualized, is always formulated on two opposing forces, at least two, right? So the forward fold here is a great example of that. As she's pushing forward through the thigh, remember Paschimottanasana is Paschima is west, right? So you get the clue in the name. It's a pulling back against the push out, right? So a westward face back stretch, practicing yoga traditionally to the east and stretching back to the west. It's not again about the hamstrings, it's about finding a way to pull back against the legs to basically stretch the back again and all the muscles, all the big muscles of the body are in the back. So the back is where we're really looking to stretch pretty much all the time, along with the other limbs as well. But really the main thing that we're looking to mobilize or open is our back, our trunk, our spine. So pushing out of the feet, the ball of the big toe is slightly further forward than the heel. Yeah? So there's an outward push and in this way you can always, you can always avoid yoga butt or, yoga or a hamstring problem, right? Because you're pushing forward through this muscle group so you're not pulling back. If she pulled back her heels and then went forward, she's tightened the hamstrings and then she's going forward. It's a recipe for disaster. But if you push out of your big toes, forward of your big toes, you're pushing through the front of the, the legs and you're, you're releasing the back of the legs. So that's the first thing with the legs. It's really easy, but it changes a lot, a lot in many people's practice for the better. Now you don't have any pain folding forward, really, if you apply this technique. The second thing, remember, is actually in pushing forward, what she's going to do is pull back. So the second thing to bear in mind is the position of the hips. Imagine you've got a bowl, and that bowl stays on the floor, and it doesn't tip forward, and it doesn't tip back this circumference of the hip stays down. That's the easiest way to look at it. So the, the pelvis isn't exactly tucked under completely, but it's certainly not this. If you just pull your bum back, you see this, pulling the skin of the butt cheeks back, often you find this, pulling the heels back, pulling the bum back, and then going forward. And if she goes forward like this, overstretching the hamstrings, the pelvic tilt is forward, and the, uh, and the stretch is in the lower back as well. So although it feels like a lot of sensation, it's not the sensation that you want. And in fact, Often the first sensation you feel in the yoga is really unfortunately not the, not the one you want. So ultimately, if you balance forces, you shouldn't really feel anything in a stretch at all. It should just feel comfortable, right? Less sensation is better than more, in fact, certainly in this case. So tucking the tailbone slightly under, so the hips are neutral. Remember that basin of water I suggested, you keep that basin on the floor. The second thing she has to do is push forward. I mentioned that already. The third thing she has to do is lift up from the ribs. So imagine you've got a yoga block here. You don't need the yoga block on your belly, but you're trying to lift up and over. So the breastbone is coming over, keeping a little hollow here. Imagine you're coming over a bar at the stomach. Catching the toes, doesn't matter if you can take the toes or can't. You could catch the legs or you could catch the knees. It doesn't really matter. The essence of the posture is preserved if you use the opposing forces. So pushing out of the toes, the toes are forward. On the exhale breath, as the belly pulls in, it pulls back through her back. So she's got one force going forward and the other force pulling back. And then holding the neck is easy. The traditional drishti, as we know, is big toes but that looks weird with the spine looking up. So my suggestion is you can keep the energetic drishti looking through the crown of the head, but the neck just follows the line of the spine. So the line of the spine is kept, the neck is kept, the drishti is, because you're, you're still coming forward with the body, but you're also pulling back. So there's an energetic forward with the drishti and it's, it's helping you with that. But then there's also a pulling back through your stomach and you're stretching backwards the back. So remember, Paschimottanasana is a westward face back stretch. Like all forward folds, having taken the feet, you're pulling back against it. Now, the other thing that's often over, um, passed over in, a, in all yoga, as far as I can see, is you're also pulling across. And that's really important because it not only relaxes the sacrum here, pulling across, it also spreads the muscles of the back and allows the spine to come through. Remember, you've got big muscle groups at the side of the body and you want them to part. So in squeezing the toes together, what you do is pull the heels apart. Imagine you've got a yoga belt around the heels. If you squeeze the heels apart, she's able to pull across her body here and also squeezing the heels apart, it spreads the sacrum here. So it's actually the width that is really super important as well because only in the width do you get the spine getting the length. Yeah? So pulling across the medial stretch across your body is often forgotten or passed over, but that's also really important. 
So I also suggest that you could think about it like this. You've got four points of a compass, north, north, south, east, west, right? And you're trying to stretch in all four directions at the scapula, at your shoulder blades all the time. Or you could think about it like this. You've got a diamond at the elbows and you're trying to create that same diamond shape between the shoulder blades. So you've got space between your shoulder blades, yeah? And as I mentioned, the head stays neutral, neither looking up nor down, just continuation of the spine. So thank you. As so often, the stretch is less complicated in the way that we make it, pulling just in one direction only and making it as intense shape possible. Rather, a yoga stretch done efficiently is done in balance, balancing forces out to pulling back. And in that way, you'll still make the physical progress, but you'll also make a deeper kind of harmony in the way that you feel about your body and the way that you, your mind rel relates to that stretch and your protect, protects your ligaments and joints because in that way you're stretching the big muscles of the back and you're not just pulling a ligament or a joint into a basically a hypermobile place. Yeah? You're using the body to grip itself and keeping the strength principle in the yoga because often I think nowadays especially yoga has become all about flexibility and the strength is lacking and we need strength. We need some form of rigidity to keep that flexibility in check. Otherwise, we'll just be a bag of bones lying on the floor or an injury in a ligament or joint that's been overstretched and hasn't been held together properly by the muscles. So how to do a forward fold, protect your body, do it efficiently and keep the strength aspect in the practice as well. Whilst understanding this right tension is a thing. The right tension is needed in yoga. It's not just about stretching as far as you can out of your body, but also pulling back towards yourself. So, Thanks for bearing with me, and that is a wrap on the forward fold. I'm sure there's more to add, but I shan't burden my, my reluctant wife anymore with that. Thank you for watching.